The Federal High Court in Lagos has convicted a former governor of Abia State, Oji Uzo Kalu, who was charged with 7.1 billion naira fraud. The court found him and his co-defendant guilty of the entire 39 counts filed against them by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Justice Mohamed Idris sentenced Kalu to 12 years imprisonment while he ordered the winding up of Kalu's pop property, Slok Nigeria Limited, charged as third defendant in the case. And joining us live in the studio is a political analyst, Alester Wilcox. Thank you for joining us this morning, sir. Thanks. It's always my pleasure to be with you. Thank you for being here. Now, yeah. what's, what's your reaction to the court judgment that brought about Oji Kalu being jailed for 12 years? Yeah, the, uh, they said the will of justice grinds slowly, yes. but surely. surely. Yeah. Uh, this is a case that has uh, been in court since 2007 or eight years about, since after Oji Kalu left uh, left. Um, governance as the uh, governor of Abia State. And this case has suffered all kinds of um, delays, denial, and all whatnot. But finally, the chicken has come home to host. The, I mean, has come home to roast. That shows that um, there is still a day of reckoning for everybody, no matter how high you are, there's a day of reckoning with the law. And the law will always catch up with anybody that has fall of the law. Now, Oje Kalu happens to be um amongst the fifth governor, ex-governor, that, that have been tried and charged to court and convicted. Yes. But many people argue the fact that there are still many people who also should be, should come under this, this sledgehammer. Yes. Uh, Kano has, um, Kano has come under. Yes. But that the, the light, the, 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 the hammer of, of, the, of, of the justice doesn't seem to be on them and that it's pretty selective in nature. Would you agree with that? Well, this is a case that has been in court since 2007, like I said. Ojoka left, left, uh, left office 2007. Yes. So, uh, and the short laughter, this case has been filed in. So, there's nobody that is selective about, just, about anybody in Nigeria because you can't catch all the criminals in one day. You, because, look, even if you catch all the criminals, you know, which court will take them? A case that has been 2007, this is 2019, 12 years in court. And a case that should have been dispensed off with. If Oju Zokal has pleaded guilty in 2007 Seven. or 8 and went for and asked for a remedy, he will have been serving his sentence maybe get a pardon. But you see, they choose to uh, uh, try the justice system in Nigeria because they know that the justice system is not, it's, it's cash and carry, there's a lot of inbuilt uh, uh, abnormalities within it. So they choose to try it. But today you see that it has come to a point where there is a pharaoh that knows no Joseph. So go and answer for your charge. And don't forget, Ojizokal is a senator. He's a senator of the current ruling uh, 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 a party you, APC, yeah. for which people have you know, have uh, 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 accused the, the, the president of the party. Anybody that comes into PD, APC, you are since forgiven, you go home and sin no more. But that has been proven wrong. The three governors today that are serving 11 years and 12 years that have been convicted yeah. are all members of the APC. So I don't see where selection is coming. So it's just that the, the EFCC and the authorities cannot catch, cannot take everybody to court. There are still some cases left in court. So and what, what, what lesson can you deduce from this case? Or what lesson should Nigerians as, as a whole, what can we learn, what can we deduce from Let the, us from keep the case? faith with the system. It is time for naming and shaming. We know people that have... Look, I always see Ojuzo Carlo always brag. Before now, he's been bragging and said that he didn't do anything wrong, he didn't do anything wrong. This and that, he was richer than he, before he became up a state governor. He was rich, he was this, he was that. We've, we've had all that, all those things being said. People should know that the wind of justice grinds slowly. But let us keep fit. All these distractions, uh, when you join APC, uh, since I were giving, they are selective, uh, this thing, this and that, they will not help anybody. It will only compound the problem and make the system weaker. Let's keep faith with the system. Anybody who is charged before any law, let him go through. There are a lot of them there. Ulis I mean, too, will soon have his day in court. All the shenanigans, Gino Mella, all, they, Sharak, all of them, they have so many issues. There are so many of them in court. And it will grow gradually, gradually. But one day, the matter will end. So long as God gives them life, and Nigerians life, we will see them, and we have things like this that will gladden our hearts. Interesting that you just made mention of Olisa Metu. Now, some many VIPs in the like of Olisa Metu have been arraigned for several offenses and cases, but it has actually somewhat been difficult to secure justice. Why is this so? Because both because of the the, the, the entire justice system in Nigeria. 
Shouldn't something be done about that? Because many something, people will argue the fact that our, done. Our, our system, our, our justice system is pretty slow. Yes, yes. something is being done, but who are, who are those? Two? It is not the, the stakeholders. Who are those that drag these cases? It's not the same stakeholders. The sons. How many sons are defending the Sametu? How many of them that are making the television to pretend dead and to claim sick and everything? And what do you have? Uh, the, man, uh, the man has a right to be uh, to a fair hearing. And when he's come to court, he will come in a stretcher, in a wheelchair, in an ambulance. The moment he left, leaves court, you see him jumping over the whole place. So it is grinding. And the same people that should make it work. It took James Ibori for is it three or four appearances in the UK court, and the matter is over. So there are some, we have a problem. And the stakeholders, being those at the, at, at the temple of justice, the lawyers, the judges, the judges are overwhelmed because they are, the courts are, are, are limited, they're overwhelmed, and, so, and the, the proof of evidence is so slow. I have, each time I go to court, I feel embarrassed. It's so slow. You have serious adjournment because it's a criminal case. You have serious adjournment and adjournment and adjournment. So the thing is too slow. But as a matter of fact, the important thing is, Let's keep faith with what is happening. If a man, the uh, Senate uh, Chief Whip, member of the ruling party, uh, a, 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 a the former governor, has had his day in court and he's been convicted, who says that Ulisa meant to, uh, Well, I'm not pro pro providing them, proving them guilty, yeah. but all of them that have cases in court, that they are dragging it, they should know that one day will come and there's a, a, a pharaoh that knows no Joseph and that pharaoh is on the throne now. It might not be there forever. But if we have a good system that will guarantee things like that. So I, 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 my advice to them is, look, if you know that you have a bad case, plead guilty. Go for plea bargaining. Plead guilty. Take a lesser sentence. Don't waste the time of the court. Don't waste the time of Nigeria. Don't incite ethnic and uh, religious tension. Don't incite uh, a political uh, 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 persecution. Plead guilty. Ask for a remedy. And then take a, get a lesser sentence. And save everybody. The embarrassment of what is happening today. All these occur yeah, this is a court of first instance, I know. Yes. He will go for an appeal. But my, my, my prayer is that he should not be granted bail while doing the appeal. Because when you are granted a bail not to start to serve your sentence and you're on appeal, you can take another five, six, seven, ten years. So let him be serving and have his, uh, and have his matter appealed up to the Supreme Court, whatever level he wants to go. But let him remain in, in jail. So that it will serve a, truly as a deterrent. Because all this shenanigans of you are, you've been convicted, you now appeal. Appeal the conviction, and you, they, 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 they will not give you a bill. I mean, for me, it doesn't help matters. Now, quickly before I let you go this morning, um, the administration of President Mahmoud Bari came in singing the song of a fight against corruption. Now, many yes. people will argue the fact there's been a cacophony in that song of the fight against corruption. How would you assess the fight against corruption so far by this administration? What, you see, what is so deep with it? I will, I will give them a pass mark. I'll give them a pass mark. Don't forget, most of these cases, he inherited them from 2000, like 2007. He was not president in 2007. He inherited all these cases. And President Mahmoud Ibrahim cannot on his own go and jail anybody. He still needs to pass through the justice system. So it is the fact that everybody is feeling this fact that there is something different happening. It's no longer business as usual. A country of over 100 million people, over 100 million people, there's no way you can win that corruption in one day. If you are winning that corruption at the federal level, the states and the local government that control bulk of our resources, the private sectors. So it's a fight that everybody should put on to. Everybody, all of us should contribute and support the president and support the institutions that have been established to make sure that these things work. And there is no gain saying it is for our own benefit. So I'll give the, the fight a pass mark and I will still encouraging the administration to continue on this fight. This fight is a fight of no retreat, no surrender, which we must win to make Nigeria better.